Now the harvests are coming thick and fast. And one of my favorite harvests, because it's free, is these blackberries. Now we've got a mass on our allotment that actually grow really, really well. Last year, we picked kilos of them and I literally just used the last bag from the freezer about two weeks ago. Now, they may not be perfect, but we literally don't do anything apart from cut them back when they're actually in the way. Now, these have been here for many, many years, way, way before we arrived, but it's a fantastic, easy fruit that you can find on most of your walks. You'll actually find these growing wild in the hedgerows, maybe along canals, in fields, and they're an absolute blessing at this time of year. Now, obviously, if you are foraging wild for these, just make sure you got the landowner's permission. And you don't really want to be foraging close to any main roads because who knows what kind of nasties will be on that. But you can find them all over the place. Now, what am I gonna do with these? Well, this bush has just started to ripen up. So each, every couple of days, I'm coming down and picking them and putting them into a bag for the freezer so I can make the most of this little free harvest. And I think this year, I'm actually gonna make some blackberry wine. Now, I haven't had blackberry wine for a long, long time, and I really, really enjoyed it last time. So I think maybe a very simplified version of blackberry wine, if you can get simplified, because I have no demijohns, I have nothing like that to make them with, but I may just, just see if I can make something with very little equipment. I also want to make some non-fermented blackcurrant juice and maybe even some jams or jellies. Obviously seedless because the one thing that you will find with most of these blackberries that you'll find on your walks is they're very very heavily seeded. Now obviously each little one of these little balls has got a seed in it but some varieties are less harsh than others but I'll take what I can get. Now foraging for free bits of food is a great way to do it. Just make sure you know what you're picking. Now on my walks previously over the years, I found tay berries, logan berries, gooseberries. You got your elderflowers, you got your damsons, you got your plums, you got your crab apples, and maybe even lucky to have a little apple tree hidden away somewhere on one of your walks. Now, in a few weeks' time, I'm actually going to be taking a little adventure and seeing if I can find all the fruit trees that I used to know when I was much, much younger. I'm after some damsons and I'm after some plums, which is much later in the year in general. Now, I know the plums, there is some plum trees now and gauge, green gauge trees that are actually ripening now. But I'm actually going to take a little adventure and see what I can actually find free. Now, I'm really lucky where I live. I have a lot of countryside and actual public walks and things like that. So I know majority of the places I go foraging, it's not an issue. But again, if you're going onto private land, please get the permission of the landowner. You could land yourself into some trouble. This time of the year, harvesting comes in so thick and fast with such a variety of different foods that you actually can become very overwhelmed if you've planted an awful lot of things on your allotment. But just take it in your stride. If it's something like berries or something like that, where they literally ripen a few at a time, why don't you just pop them, wash them and pop them into a freezer bag until you've got enough to do what you want to do. And it's the same thing with a lot of fruits and vegetables that maybe you've got a glut of, you can actually pop in the freezer. And this is the same for your tomatoes. So if you've got lots and lots of tomatoes that you can't possibly deal with at the moment, you can actually freeze them whole and pop them into your freezer and they'll freeze like little marbles ready to use later on. For cooking purposes, absolutely perfect. You can literally throw them into your dishes frozen where they'll stew or cook down however you're doing it to make a delicious sauce or meal. Now some of the other harvests that we've got is runner beans. Now runner beans is not everybody's cup of tea. 
but I've started making more relishes and pickles at this time of year, trying to use up some of the glut of the fruits and vegetables that we get. Now I'm finding runner beans about this size or a little bit bigger are perfect for these chutneys. So I need to make sure I'm harvesting a good load of these because I think I'm gonna make runner bean relish. So I need a good few of these to actually make that for when I get home. Now you want to keep up with your harvesting, especially of your beans. If you let them go too far, the actual plant may actually stop providing you with any more beans. Now for some people, that might be a good thing, but for me, I wanna make the most of this crop. Now I'm the only one that will eat these as they are, either raw or steamed or pan fried or however you like to eat them. But I think in relishes or pickles, I don't think people would mind in the slightest because the flavour changes so much. Now, a lot of people don't like that squeaky texture, and I get that. But picking them young, you're less likely to get that. Now, I need to pick my runner beans about this size at the moment because that's the jar I'll be using to actually make the pickle. Now, I'm not going to show you how I do all the pickle and the relishing today but I will make a video on what I'm going to do with some of the harvest that I get today. Now, later on in the year, I will actually be leaving these, some of these pods to actually ripen and get a bit bigger. Some for seed for next year, and actually some to actually dry and use in casseroles and things like that. I've never tried runner beans as an actual bean before, as a dried pulse. So it's something that I actually wanna try this year. So later on in the season, I'll actually leave the pods full on so I can actually harvest them and dry the beans out for basically winter use. What are you harvesting at the moment? I'm quite enjoying it to be honest because it's quite slow and steady this year. It's not a mass all in one go. And it actually gives me time to think of things and ways to actually preserve and use those products. But let me know what you're actually looking forward to or what you've actually harvested already and what you're going to do with it. Are you just gonna eat it fresh off the plant or cook it, steam it, boil it, however you've traditionally done it? Or are you gonna try something new and create something tasty, something that you can preserve and use throughout the rest of the year? Be it freeze it, be it preserves, be it relishes, whatever the case may be. I know I need to pick some more courgettes today because I've actually run out of courgette cake. Now, since that recipe I put out, I've actually made three courgette cakes and they've all gone really, really quick. So I've got to make another one today. So I'll have to add that onto my to-do list. But I actually want to add some different flavors into it this time. One of the things that I do need to harvest today is some more of my blueberries. Now I've been picking these as I go and they've been going into a bag for the freezer. but I think I'm actually gonna use some of these in that courgette cake today and have a lovely blueberry lemony courgette cake to eat. Last year, we didn't have anything on this particular plant, but we repotted it on in February and gave it a really good feed. Now this particular plant was left from the previous owner. So we've kind of nurtured it a little bit more. And this year, it looks like we're gonna have close to a kilo's worth of fruit just off this one bush. Now I've got big plans for blueberries next year and I actually want a whole area because I think fruit bushes are a really good deal for the amount of money that these kind of fruits cost in the supermarket and it's something that majority of people actually enjoy eating. I think putting as many fruit bushes as you can happily contend with on your plot is a really good thing. In general they're normally very very easy to to look after. You just need to feed and water with the occasional pruning. But these are so yummy. Mm. So sweet, took so long to ripen, but now that they have, absolutely fantastic. Now, I've got a little bit of a harvest. Now I've got some runner beans, French beans, some beetroots, 
and some cucumber in this one. And this is my first lot of harvest of the black currants, the chilies, and a courgette and a couple of gherkins. Now all this is going to be used in the next day or two. And hopefully I'll put some videos up of how I'm gonna use the start of this harvest. But guys, just keep harvesting, keep picking, and keep planning for what you're going to do differently for next year. Sometimes a whole growing season really does open our eyes to what we can and can't grow on our area. But good luck, and I really wish and hope for the best for all your harvests. Take care.